featuring our book of the month, Waylander. We are, uh, well, it's brought to you by the Lowry Agency, and I'm your host, David Lowry, obviously. And joining us are co hosts, Kiara Ballantyne, and our newest team member, Melody Ann Jones Coffin, better known as Magic or MJ. Please give her a big round of welcome. Woohoo! Our other co host, Dion Lister, is running a little bit late. She will be here joining us shortly. Uh, we will be taking any comments and questions on Twitter, so if you have anything to add or anything to ask, please tweet us at Club Fantasy, and I will read that off as soon as I see it. Uh, also, please check out our website, clubfantasy.wordpress.com, as well as uh, facebook.com slash clubfantasy, and you can join us on goodreads.com, find our group, group uh, Club Fantasy, and join in the discussions that we have there. So, here we are. With Waylander. Yeah. With Waylander. Now, M Melody Ann, being the go-getter that she is, came up with a bunch of talking points for us because she's the organized one of the group, evidently. And no. No, actually, <laughs> because this book had me very conflicted. 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 Con no, conflicted. Not just conflicted, but conflicted. And at... Some points Con, afflicted not usually, with. Con's not usually a good uh, word, so what are you saying? Um, well, you know. In my, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> what I am saying is I did not finish this book. And it was not because I didn't like the story. Exactly. It was, um, well, now, it's my understanding that this was his first attempt at writing a redemption story. But does I it, kind of wondered if it was his first book. Yeah, as I said, does it really matter what the topic is? Well, I, you know, I don't know. But, um... Mm, okay, so I'm going to dive right in. No, Can you're not allowed. Uh, really? <laughs> I'm just joking. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the thing. The story. The story is engaging. The story makes you makes you want to read the book. But then there are things that make you want to throw the book a little bit. <laughs> a, little, a little bit. I couldn't throw the book. It was on my iPad. A lot? I, well, oh, and, thank you. And, 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 uh, see, she can throw the book. <laughs> I couldn't. It was on my Kindle and on my laptop. And, yeah, have you ever thrown a laptop? Yes. It's divorce material in my house throwing a laptop, so that doesn't happen. <laughs> but, okay, so here's the thing. I'm reading this book, and it says, am I the only one who saw it say book four of the Drain Eye Chronicles? Does no. it say that? No. But Mine says, the, the, the Amazon thing that I had says book four, like it's, you know, the fourth book of something? No, it's not. It's not. It's there's, not. Um, it's the first one. We, well, there's a whole bunch of books based in Drenai about Drenai people. And I actually think Waylander is historical to some of the other Drenai books. So I think by the time you get to Drush the Legend, like, this is actually history. Yeah, um, exactly. I think. Exactly. Yeah. So I, thought, I wasn't yeah, sure whether that was an Amazon screw-up or what. It's an Amazon screw-up, yeah. yeah, I, I, it, yeah it, I was, it, because I couldn't, I, I couldn't figure out... The only thing I could figure was that would explain the reason that some of the primary characters had very little history, backstory, explanation, but some of the no, secondary characters, better. we learned everything about them, including what they like to eat. Really? And it was not like you had any real conversation to build a character around anyway. It was all no, real dialogue sentences. Uh, yeah, um, there was a lot of... I mean, Odo from Deep Space Nine had more personality than any of these characters. No, no, actually, actually, there were a few points at which I saw sparks of personality. I really did. Um, I liked when he was treat teaching Danielle to fight. I actually, and I'm going to say it, Danielle, because I don't know how you would really say it. But when he is teaching her I to think fight, he's got this, like, really good philosophical... You know why you don't want to? Why fear is not? Why you why you want to overcome yeah. fear and blah blah blah? And I'm like, and I'm thinking, what do you do? Yeah, 
I was like, I'm like, okay, so we're going to learn something about him. No. But he had some really smart stuff to say. I think that if you were to read an outline or a synopsis for this book, you would probably think, wow, what a great story, you know, and there's some really good ideas in there for the characters, and you know, this is really going somewhere. Actually, I read, that's what I did. I read some, I read some reviews and some, yeah. um, some synopses before I read the book to kind of know what I was getting into. Yeah. And because uh, I, I am totally not a kid that has a problem with spoilers. Spoil me. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that too. <laughs> but, but what? What was the? Uh, I felt Poor like. Execution. Really it was like it was like it was like good sex that could have been really great. I mean, you know what this I mean. Is, um, like it wasn't bad. This is what I meant to. No, it's not, not bad. It's not just this, I will not say this book is bad. I am going to finish this book, but not as good as it could have been. It just doesn't live up to its potential. It could have been so good. It's like it could have been really awesome. It's like it's like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Michael Bay directing. Oh wait. Did that happen? Sorry. You guys are giving it too much credit, I think. Actually, no, because I don't think so. But you go ahead, tell me. I just, I mean, there's some things I liked. There's some plot points that I liked. But it was, the read was so dry, it didn't even matter to me how much potential it had. It was, it was. That's because it's so badly written. Yeah, it was, it was painful for me to have to pick up my iPad and, and read. When I have a plethora of other good stuff around that I could be reading. Yeah. Okay, or, but this is I could have been stabbing this myself. Is why I to, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, this is why I wanted to talk about uh, storytelling versus writing as separate skills, um, because storytelling is the ability to put together a good story. You know, like d does the story actually work? Uh, and there are a, a numerous ways to tell a story, writing of which is only one. And unfortunately, that's the format that's been chosen for this story. Mm -hmm. And I don't think David Gemmell's writing skills are actually all that good, even though I think his ability to craft a story is not too bad. Um, so, you know, but in all fairness, when you're talking about delivery to the average person out there, you're in, and I'm going to get in a whole lot of trouble because I'm going to say this. <laughs> what? You just call me average. It's probably good enough for the average no, audience. The average reader, all right, the average reader is about 7th seven, seventh to 8th grade level reading average. You now that's not everybody. That's, that's not everybody. But the reason, one of the reasons that Twilight took off Everybody please so send your hate mail to at Sapphire Blade. Do not send it to me. Send it to <laughs> Sapphire Blade. Yes, please send me hate mail because oh, hate it, it, it has always fault. been my it has it been always my been my dream to get hate mail and that's what I'm doing here. It is my fault I brought her on the team. <laughs> However, I'm not responsible for what she says. No, actually in all fairness, one of the reasons that Twilight was so big among adults is because you didn't have to work really hard to enjoy the story. There was a story yeah, there. Twilight's exactly the same. It was, yeah, it was, it was a story, and, and, and in all fairness, at the time of her story, it was a fairly original story. Not 100% original, but it was fairly original. It basically took that Buffy-Angel relationship that everybody had kind of been in love with, and it actually expanded into, into a real world. And I'm not saying that she was copying Buffy or Angel, but... Rule number one of Club Fantasize, we don't talk about Twilight. <laughs> we don't talk about Twilight. And if you forget any of those rules, refer to number one, because... <laughs> am I in trouble? No. Am I going to get 30 lashes, am I? <laughs> to me, it takes more effort to read a story like this. Well, and that's the thing. Me that, too. Me too. You, but, but, but here's the other thing. Also, if, you, if you're used to reading a more... a, a different style of writing... This, is, this book is kind of um, bad television. It is, and it's exactly what it's like. It's like bad television. Um, but, but back to what you were saying about the average reader, you're probably right because David Gemmell, as far as I know, is quite popular. Um, well, he's published at I least 25. Read, I didn't read, but maybe 10 percent of the maximum of 10 percent of the reviews I read were bad. Max. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Very yeah, so, popular. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. 
I'm finishing the story. Well, you know, <laughs> no. I would have to agree. I mean, if I read this back when I was a kid, it probably wouldn't have bothered me as much. But then again... Yeah, exactly. But then again, I read Dragonlance, and I thought that was fine, too. <clears throat> so... Uh, I didn't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I'm going to defend Tracy Hickman, because I've I actually taken joking. some of his writing classes, and he is a great guy. I'm just joking. I actually liked all those books. I was just... No, you know what? I never read Dragonlance. Ever. I, I, the first three I really loved. But Ever. I mean, Back, I mean, back to the point. If I was, you know, if I was in eighth, ninth, tenth grade, I probably would have been okay with this, because yeah. I w hadn't read, you know. Well, I shouldn't say that. I probably read three or four hundred books by that that time. I'm sure at least. But um, I may not have cared as much as I do now. Yeah. Whereas now, I read to escape and forget about the stress of normal life. Back then, I read because I was bored and I just loved reading. Okay, yeah. so I have a question. And these. Doesn't give you an escape so much anymore, right? What is, what is his target demographic? Is this is this YA? Is this is his target demographic the Dragonlance level crowd? I I don't know, but they didn't have a young adult back then. No, as a matter of fact, Dragonlance was actually pretty considered pretty high level um, fantasy for what existed. I mean, there wasn't Dragonlance is actually the granddaddy of uh, bringing it bringing it to mainstream. When, when when did Dragonlance start? I mean, this is from 1986. I, yeah, this uh, Dragonlance, I was in high school, so it would have been 85, 84, 85. Dragonlance 80. was in the 80s, about the same time as this, so that's what I'm wondering. Are we looking at uh, are we looking at a rep something that's representative of that that time period? I don't think so, because I read a ton back then of fantasy stuff, and none of it sucked as bad as this. Um, I from, think from a, from a writing standpoint. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just just to give an example, I mean, Terry Brooks was writing in the 80s, and while the sort of scenario terribly derivative, I think the actual stand of the writing in some of his books is still a cut above this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was a ton of Dungeons and Dragons books back then, and none of them were as badly written as this. Now, most of those were completely derivative. But... Yeah. But you're 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 reading it for what it is because you love that fantasy world. It doesn't really matter what the story is. It's like watching your favorite Star Trek episode. You know that every month, every week, it's going to be uh, the same kind of episode. It's whatever the monster of the week is or the alien. Of the week. Same thing with fantasy back then. So yeah, um, you know it, this was just completely. It's kind of like to me. It's like how I explain it in music. It's like. If I, if I listen to pop music, to me it's like watching somebody draw in black and white and doing a real basic sketch. Not that black and white can't be amazing and artistic, but just a real basic sketch. Whereas if, you know, if you... If a line you, for it. Right. If you know somebody who's truly a brilliant musician, it's like going to, to, to look at a Monet. Completely different mm. level of imagination and, and dreamscape and, and sonic, whatever. Well, this was kind of the same thing. This was like a bare bones... It, it is. Yeah. It, it is. As I said, if you'd read an outline for this, I mean, this barely elaborates on an outline. Yeah, that the kind of depth um, and imagery and mood that you would expect from the book, as opposed to the outline, just isn't there. It doesn't deliver. Yeah. It almost makes me wish that we had book remakes, like we have movie remakes, because if someone who was even half talented took this and rewrote the story just from an outline, say. I think you, you could potentially get something that is so much better th than this. You know, it just so you're thinking something like a, a Brent. You're thinking like a Brent Weeks or a a, a Terry Brooks or Brent you, well, who would yeah, who Brent would you Weeks, have rewrite it? Who would you Brandon have rewrite it? Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> <laughs> you know that he's taking a lot of flack for that last for the last Wheel of Time book, right? Yeah, I haven't didn't. read it yet. I can't make myself read it. Don't go there. I, I I haven't read it either. I've got to finish it too. So <laughs> that should be what we do. Have you read it, David? The, no, I haven't. I'm I'm still stuck on Winter's Heart. <laughs> you uh, the, you know that's kind of like, that that series kind of had like the George R. R. Martin thing going for me. It's like it took so long between books that I almost feel like I have to go back and start all over again before I can finish that series just to remember everything that's going on. No, I reread it every time a new book comes <laughs> out. I understand that. And, and, and okay. You know, Winter's Heart did kind of lose me. I, I wasn't as impressed with that one, so I, it slowed me down. Kind of like, kind of like the the not the last uh, 
of Martin book for Game of Thrones, but the one with Mark Piece for Crows. I think is that isn't that what it is? The red one. Yeah, the, the full one. Yeah, that one's really slow. Mm -hmm. The red one is Feast of Crows. Yeah. I yeah. Think. Feast for Crows. That, that that's where I lost interest in that one. Okay, so David, who would who would you have who would you have write this book? And then I'll introduce my wine. Go ahead. Uh, who would you have rewrite this? Anybody. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll I do volunteer. It. Jenna Jameson. <laughs> Jenna Jameson could have rewrote this book and made it more exciting. Okay, no, no, I will argue that that is not possible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she might, she might be able to write it so you would read it. <laughs> <laughs> she writes so every not, man. Could no, read. no, 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 no. It's. I, I don't. I mean, you know, I I don't want to trash like draw, it. She would draw stick figures. No. I don't want to trash it because it wasn't so bad that it's unreadable. It's just so thin. It's very thin. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, very it thin. really is. It's like you go to a restaurant and you and you and you see a picture on the menu, and you really want that meal. You want that meal. You're like that is going to be so good. And you get what you get in front of you is a is a pale shadow of what you were expecting, right. and that's kind of what so, this was. This was a, this is a really good story. Oh my god, I want this story. No, see, that's where I disagree. To me, it's a really good idea. It's a good concept. To me, the story's still missing. Why? Well, yeah, because the delivery system is so bad. Yeah, it, it's it's. Okay, so for you, the delivery right system actually got in the way of the story. Huh? It does. That's exactly right. It does. Right. Okay. It's that bad. I tend to read. I, I, ever since I was little, especially because my mom wouldn't let me read like fantasy books, I, I would go like to the little paperback bins and get like the B grade, really bad. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And so I've read a lot of that. So it, it didn't get in the way for me, but I am struggling through it. Does that yeah. make sense? Yes. I found it struggle. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break because we haven't done this in a while. Because we used to do a, a wine of the month for this group, and basically I just got lazy and then keep chasing them down. But I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this one. So this is Stonehouse Winery, and they are out of East Tennessee, so they're they're fairly local. And this is the Raspberry Mist. I don't know if, if you guys... you're not in Australia, they're local. Well, right, <laughs> local to me. Anyway. Um, I've been, you know, I discovered them right around the time we started doing all this club fantasy stuff, and I have yet to have a wine of theirs that is bad. They're an amazing little winery. So if you got nothing else to do and you love wine, check out Stone House H A U S Winery, and order some stuff. This is the Raspberry Mist. It's fabulous. And I, I do, I, I do love wine. I can only have two glasses, but I do love it when I can get it. <laughs> okay, so. Go ahead. So, right, wait, you know what? But we, we've, we've kind of beat the story thing to death. So let's yes, move on. To the next we topic. have. Let's move on to the next topic. So um, let me pull it back up here. The role of women in the book, specifically in the way that Danielle avoided death and her mental remark that women understand subjugation. So let's expand on that. And since that was your topic, MJ, go ahead. Well, it just, I, you know, maybe it's because right now it's, we're dealing with so much in the news, uh, so much violence, oh, globally, not even just here in America, <laughs> globally, violence against women and so much of, uh, so, so, so much, so many issues there. It really kind of struck me when she, when she was like, um, she pretended to enjoy the six times she was raped? What? Oh, wait, you didn't put a dagger through somebody's heart? What the hell? <laughs> but, you know, but at the same time, we're looking, she's she's in a very, very powerless position. So she kind of yeah. takes, she kind of takes the power away from them to some degree by playing to their ego. So that allows her to keep alive, whereas other victims are dead. You know? And I, I didn't like that because it kind of played to that whole old-fashioned theory that you should just it's very be there and classic. Take it. And I, I, that was like I was like, go kill somebody, girl, please. Well, okay, but now thinking of that, 
Number one, it was written in a time when that was still kind of true, even though we considered ourselves more evolved. But the story is written at a time where it was most definitely true. Mm-hmm. So if we're exactly. writing, if we if he had written it from any other point of view, it wouldn't have been realistic, unless he was writing about a completely different. Well, I guess he was, but I mean, unless you're writing about a completely different world. Well, it's I don't true to the know. old grand future. It's fantasy. Yeah. You can you can do anything in fantasy. Waylander yeah, can be a woman. Yeah, but you fantasy. can, but you can't sell anything. Yeah. You would you wouldn't get this now. You wouldn't get this now in in this decade, I don't think. But it's very true to what was being written in the eighties. Well, it is it is and it isn't. I mean, David Eddings was writing in the eighties, and he had Paul Garrow, the sorceress, and C. Nedra, and Terry Brooks had a couple of strong women characters. Yeah, that was I a think tough, overall, but kind of changing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, overall, I think it's true to the era in which it was written. Uh, even up into the. 60, 40s, 50s, 60s, you couldn't write about black people, you couldn't write around about strong female characters. We go through yeah. this process. I mean, nobody's going to publish something that isn't going to sell. You lose money on it. That's right. Back then, there was no indie movement. There was no indie books, publishers. There was nothing. So anything that's going to be written is going to fit a certain way. Otherwise, they won't take it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can see it now so much, though. <laughs> now, now let's, let's talk about Danielle, though. She kind of takes... Every, for, a, for a woman in a very powerless position in a very patriarchal society, she takes a, a very strong approach in the whole teach me to fight. Teach me how to, teach me how to conquer fear. Teach me to fight. I don't know. If, uh, I don't know if it's real. Uh, we had Red Sonny back then. Um... So you do have a couple strong female characters. I guess it didn't really stick out that much to me. What about you, Kai? I found her character actually to be one of the ones that was the least developed. It was um, very, you know, the one very thin. Yes, she was very, very thin. Um, on, on the one hand, she had this attitude of, you know, kind of go with it when you run into trouble, do whatever you got to do to kind of survive type of thing. But she obviously didn't like that because she did look for a way to fight back. But at the same time, I found her character to be a bit contradictory. You know, she had this attitude of don't rock the boat, do whatever you've got to do to survive. But, God, she didn't know how to hold a tongue. You know, she, she couldn't <laughs> she, she could never shut up when she was talking to Waylander. Like, right. you know, he's just rescued her from a certain death and she knows that he's a notorious assassin and she complains about the food that he's cooking her. I mean, that doesn't strike me as being very bright. Well, um, and... What about what I want your opinion on this? This is great. So she, they can't be nice to each other for ten seconds, and then she says, "I love you." I told yeah, you I love that, you. That's that's junior high love, anyway. Yeah, the the romance was so underdeveloped; it wasn't funny. Yeah, yeah, you always pick on the one that you like the most. That's the way it's always been. Uh. I said junior high. <laughs> I know you're more involved. Than, I know you're more involved than that, evidently, supposedly from the rumor mill. But I'm more involved than that. You haven't seen my husband. Poor man's got bruises, head to toe. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. But Nobody I mean, call the police, please. Very typical. It's very typical, I think, in writing and in some probably cultures, even that there is a little bit of um, tension between the man and the woman before they finally come to terms with their feelings. Oh, yeah. You have to have tension and conflict in a romance subplot, otherwise it doesn't work, or in a romance book, for that matter. Um, but this one was so clumsily done. It was just... Uh, yeah, it, they it were was, tearing each other's throats out. Yeah, no subtlety. Right. They're like, they're like <laughs> oh, I love you. So it's just like being... Yeah. You, you, you didn't get that sense that they were fighting because they liked each other. You just got the sense that they were fighting because they didn't like each other. Um, that there was none of that sort of build up where you could read it and go, Oh, I know what's gonna happen, they're gonna fall for each oh, other, you know. It's kinda of like you're really going, I wish she would shut up and oh my god, she hates him so much and huh, what are you doing? Now you're having sex. There was a couple <laughs> like, of spots. Yeah, see I, I I like part of me was like, is she gonna kill him while they're having sex, maybe? What's, yeah. What's but that would have been the end of the book, now wouldn't it? Well, you know <laughs> that maybe sense. Wayland, uh, yeah, probably true. Maybe if he, so, well, you know, if he comes so, back. You know, when she when she first met uh, the lady in the city that took her in, Casey, yeah, yeah. There was there was the hint there, 
and there was a couple other hints before. I mean, they did foreshadow it a little bit that there yeah, was. Yeah, but very light. Very, right. very, very. Yeah, very Hula, light. the, uh, the then, old witch. The old then, witch. Yeah, when the old witch, you know, did her thing and said, you know, the red haired chick and all that. So. Um, that was like within 10 pages of them actually hooking up, though. Right. <laughs> and there was 180 pages before that. But okay, pages, the foreshadowing. Let's talk weather, about the foreshadowing. 10 pages in this book is like 100 pages in any other book because there's. You, you have to fill in those 10 pages with everything you're missing. You it should have been foreshadowed from page one. <laughs> or at least the page when he met her. Okay, page five. Yeah, page five. I was the same. It was page one. Wait a second. Wasn't that the one where we weren't even looking at the Waylander? We were, like, yeah. watching the armor? All right, folks. For those of you yes. that are watching, don't forget, if you want to tweet or you have any comments, especially about Rod Stewart's voice in here, tweet us. <laughs> <laughs> And, Actually, uh, let us know what you think. Or your I book. do want to bring up one of the women that commented. Um, Amy Holmes had said that she loved these books and she loved Waylander's character. Wait, and I could wait see, a minute. Where's where are you getting this from? Um, it was on my page when I All when right, I. Now you tell Amy to tweet us at Club Fantasy because those were the instructions. Uh, okay, but when I posted that I that that we were that I was reading Waylander, <laughs> you tell Facebook. Amy she's in she's she you know, you know Amy. Okay, so on a serious note, she compared Waylander's character and his um very, he really is an he really is an antihero in the whole. Anti-hero. Okay, she compared him to Riddick from Pitch Black. Now, have you both seen Pitch Black? Yeah, a long time ago. Okay, and the Chronicles of Riddick. <laughs> And the what? And the Chronicles and are in it? Yes. Chronicles. Are you watching the next one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's a Vin Diesel fan. No, yes. I'm a Riddick fan. <laughs> Riddick okay. is better than Vin Diesel. <laughs> yes, he is. Okay, so let's let's talk about, what do you think about the comparison? She felt like there was a strong similarity between Riddick and, I mean, can you could you see that anti-hero? Yeah, They're but that's... they anti-heroes. It's very uh, obvious both... that anti-hero. Yeah. You know, it's very but, obvious. And, and to be honest with you, you get more out of Riddick in the first five minutes of that movie than you do in this exactly. whole film. So I was going to say, Riddick is so much more developed than Wylander is. You know, I mean, it, it's a fair comparison, but... Uh, so in the, hands of a, in the hands of a talented writer, we could have seen a, a Riddick-level hero. Yes. I think in the hands of a talented writer... I could have done a better job... You know, I think in the hands of a talented writer, this book would have been on the same level as, you know, some of the other major series that are out there. Because yes. to be honest with you, I'd never even heard of this until Kiara brought it up. Um, yeah, I, I had not heard of it either. I was kind of it was kind of interesting. But I mean it could have been on there with it could have been up there with Game of Thrones or uh, Wheel of Time or I won't say Tolkien, but just about any other major series that we still buy today that started twenty years ago. Which is interesting because you you guys hadn't heard of David Gemmell, but now there's a prestigious literary award in the UK, the David Gemmell Legends Award. We don't uh, which win Brandon, in the UK. I yes. know you don't. <laughs> Brandon Sanderson won that award in 2011 for Way of Kings. I haven't read Brandon yet. We'll, no, but you we'll, know, work, we'll work on that, David. Well, <laughs> I'm still trying to get through Winner's Heart so I can get to the other books that he wrote to finish that out. Well, just read one of Brandon Sanderson's books then. I'll yeah, he actually what. writes his own books. Uh, no, I don't believe it. Yes, um, he does. <laughs> so that could we'll, be We'll do one. Yeah. And, yeah, there we go, because actually I've heard uh, I, I've heard many people say that they prefer his his books to the Wheel of Time Brandon Sanderson books. I like them both. He, he's very talented, though. He tried very hard. He, I think he worked very hard trying to keep... Um, the, the the spirit of Robert Jordan in you know, it, it's really interesting and this is a little off topic but when we did the geek eccentric podcast last Sunday we kind of went off of um, you know uh, kids that finished off their father's books whether it had been Tolkien series or it would have been Herbert series or whatever and we did talk about Sanderson a little bit that's it's it's Bad enough when you're writing somebody's books like he did and he isn't related, but when you're a kid and trying to finish off Daddy's series or Mommy's series and they're legendary, that's a tough order. So for any Well, McCafferty, uh, the, the Dragons of Pern, I believe her son's finishing it, isn't he? I don't know. 
Yeah, it's not. <laughs> um, I have Brandon Sanderson. That was well. Okay, so. Anyway, I'm just saying. Yeah, it's a it's a and monumental was, task to take something like that over. It is. He was he was personally invited to to write that though by Robert Jordan's wife and editor. So it, 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 there was no selection process. She actually phoned him and said, "We want you to finish it." Yeah, can you imagine the pressure. That's but that says a lot about his writing capabilities. It does. It does because there that that's who they thought of. Now, so back to so back to Waylander. What we are. We're looking yes. at a character that could have been a major draw. Now, everybody has agreed. And now, David, you're the one who doesn't like the story. No, I like the story. I like the fact that there was, there was, to me, it's more concept than story. Okay. So talk about that. Well, I just mean that it was so thin that, that you have the, you have, you have like the scaffolding around the building before the building's completed. And that's all this book did for me. It was like the the basic. You didn't even get the full frame up before you could start laying drywall and everything else. The, the, there was so much not in the story as far as personality, character development, um, historical, anything of the dialogue. Trip. Yeah, nothing. So it was you 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 got from point A to point B, but it was the most. It was like walking through Kansas or Nebraska. There was nothing to see but cornfield. Okay, there are some places in the book where you can kind of see that David Gemmell has a concept of what you need to do to pull off what he's trying to achieve, and, and there's an attempt made, but it's just so badly done that it's virtually ineffective. We do have okay. a comment on Twitter. So, Tanya Canarito, I think that's how we say her name. Nice hi, Tanya. Everybody say hi to Tanya. Hi Tanya, and Hi, Tanya, Tanya. will be joining us as a book reviewer for Club Fantasy, so uh, good news there. Um, she says it is McCaffrey's son that's trying to follow in Anne's footsteps, and in her honest opinion, he's not holding a candle to it. No. Just a side note. Well, and I don't know if you guys know, Tanya actually has a book out, her second one, just FYI. <laughs> Didn't know that. But you can follow Tanya at T M Y C A N N on Twitter. At T M Y Can. Anyway, back to the point. So all right, so let's talk we? about Waylander's character. He doesn't trust anybody. He expects everybody. Everybody. That's the only thing I can relate to. Okay. So talk so talk about it, David. Let's talk about the Waylander and his inability to believe that I mean he's not even surprised when the the man he depends on to handle all of his finances the man he trusts with all his money admits to yeah I let them know that you're here and um, they should be on their way to kill you and and he's like he's like okay no problem doesn't kill the man doesn't get upset. He's just like, okay, well, you know, because you, I would have killed you if you hadn't told me the truth. Uh, you know, uh, it kind of makes sense problem. to me, actually. It does because there isn't a person on this planet just about that isn't going to screw you if given the opportunity if they're not happy with you. So hey now, and people take offense to anything, and they will do or say anything, whether it's true or not. So, uh, especially <laughs> with the internet, anybody can get on Facebook and say whatever they want, um, and they'll say it out of anger or out of frustration or whatever. Um, and or just to troll and protect you, and a notorious assassin is a big ask. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, uh, it's not a it's not a shock to assume that somebody who doesn't know you, uh, if they get paid more money or if they're forced into a difficult situation, isn't going to wreck you at all. Yeah, why, why, why should that merchant have risked his life or his family, if he had one, to protect right. Wylander, who's just a business customer? Right. And, and to be honest with you, that plot is no... You see that plot in everything. It could have been in Firefly. There was a guy that was just the post office and basically the same thing. You know, he ratted the team out because he was threatened. So it's, it's not unusual. It's not an unusual plot device, but I just think in general people... Uh, do whatever's in their own best interests, and sometimes that means hurting somebody else. So that's not surprising that people aren't trustworthy or t to be trusted. 
And I think Wayland keeps keeps him on to manage his investments, probably because good investment bankers basically are hard to find. Um, and the guy's done a good job with his finances. So you know, he tr he trusts him with his finances. But he doesn't trust him with his life. Right. But he doesn't trust well, anybody with his life because. Well, and here's the other thing: is Waylander's on the one-way trip to nowhere. I mean, come on, he didn't know if he was going to return or not. So, what did it who did what did it matter who had his money? If he didn't return, it, it was no good to him. He had he had no concept of needing anything or wanting anything. Did anybody find it weird that he told this guy to take all of his uh, to make sure that the the two girls and Danielle were taken care of? No, because he had nobody else to tell. Six days with them. No, he had nobody else to tell. His his only other friend was a mercenary who already who he already knew was going to stab him in the back. It had already been prophesied that that was going to happen. Danielle was off somewhere else leading his tribe of of robe cloaks. So who else was he going to tell? I think part of the concept of this book is that Waylanders change from a, an amoral assassin into somebody who actually gives a damn about other people is not actually a natural evolution. It's not something that comes about because of some personal epiphany or experience that he's had. It's it's the catalyst for that change is actually his interaction with the priest Ardalian. So in some ways his change is a little bit artificial. And I guess perhaps there's a talking point in there, you know, what is the better character? Do we like a character better if they come to the realization on their own that their way of life is a bad way of life and that they should strive to be a better person? Or Waylander's character who is essentially forced into changing against what he would have otherwise would have been, except for the fact that he ran into Dardalian. Well, there's a, and, and actually Dardalian's a very, am I the only one who thinks he's a very developed character? He's the only he's one of the most developed characters. Yeah. And so let's talk about, um, let's talk about what, at what point can we identify a point that we saw Waylander start to change? Immediately. Very early. Yeah. I mean, he immediately, he was doing things for that guy that he wouldn't have done for anybody else the moment he gave him his own clothes. And don't you think that, does anybody find that just a little too early for us because we didn't get enough of the bad guy? No, uh, the guy was so stoked to begin with, you could kind of sense that, I think. But also, yeah. you know, we know just in our own lives that we're always searching for something spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be some sort of religion or some sort of meaning in life. So I think it was fairly obvious that as soon as he met this guy that there could be some sort of change. Hi, Dion! Hello, beautiful. Hi. <coughs> so you, you we can not hear. You. We can hear you, man. Ah, uh, here I am. It, my thing muted me on purpose. Well, it doesn't it, want me hard. to be. here. <laughs> sorry, I'm late. I had. To, yeah, sorry. I had I had Tweep Nation this morning, as I do every Saturday. But we're changing it now, so I shouldn't be late again. Yeah. Well, we are glad you're here. Um, we're talking about. Uh, the change in Waylander uh, and how quickly it happened if, and if that was a shock once you met Guardian. Okay, well you guys keep talking. I don't want to jump in and I'll, I'll jump in when you guys have said what you're in the middle of saying. <clears throat> well, what actually, what? why don't we ask her what she thought of the book? Yeah, what you, what, yeah. I was disappointed. Yahoo! <laughs> I... I thought yeah, it was a really, yeah, it was a, it was, the story was okay and it was fast moving and there was a bit of intrigue and that sort of thing and I didn't mind the characters, I quite liked the characters but they were inconsistent, they were. The, the dialogue was stilted, um, there wasn't a lot of emotion, like there's so many, that's the other thing that really pissed me off, almost everybody dies at the end of the book but I didn't shed one tear. It was irritating that he had to kill so many people, but it was also irritating that I didn't care. But it was really like only one person died at the end of the book because they all talk the same. Ah, yeah. <laughs> they do, don't they? That's the thing. It, and, and there's so many typos. Oh, my God, the missing dialogue, like quotation marks, the, the wrong words. There was a couple of sentences I didn't even know what they were trying to say. And it there's was a couple just of words missing altogether. Now, did you, read, yeah. did you read the paperback or did you read the e-book? 
the e-book. I did too. Okay. I was just wondering if it was. I was like, is it just the e-book? Did, did the uh, did the paperback have the same problem? There's, I don't think there's that many. I, I've noticed a couple of instances where there's the wrong word or a missing word. I haven't noticed any missing quotation marks. Okay. Yeah, I, I, no, there was I heaps found of that I find more errors in the e-books than I do in the original printings. Yeah, yeah. Look, you can forgive a couple of typos. There's always going to be a couple, but this was... There must have been a hundred. It was disgusting. Not if they hired yeah. you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, so I was, this, is a, this is a Del Rey traditionally published book. Yeah, look, and you know what bugs me about it too is that when you talk about traditionally published books and there's typos, people go, yeah, whatever, they, they overlook it. But if you get a self-published book and there's like five typos, people will smash you for it because it's self-published and they just want to put you down. That's what really irritates me. It's not a level, level playing field. That's everything. You should hear what I hear about my blog. The grammar Nazis come out the second you put it out. So, it's well, you know what? That's I, ridiculous. You know what I found? That? Huh? You know what I found interesting? I was halfway through the book. I went and looked the publisher up because I thought it was a self-published book. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I'm guilty. I'm so guilty. I can't believe that I actually entertained. Because you know, I I I believe that I'm fair and that I would always. You know that I would never make that that prejudgment, but there was a point. I stopped the book and I went and I looked for a publisher and expected to see Create Space and I didn't. And I was like, Del Rey, Del Rey, bad <laughs> Del Rey. Mine says Century Hutchinson was the original publisher in 1986. That might be that might be why maybe Del Rey is just the distributor. Uh, I don't yeah. think so. I it's think that the, by all, but I think that there's funny things that happen when 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 software gets involved and they're trying to copy and scan. Oh. And, and there probably is no soft copy of this book in existence before they made it an e-book. Yeah. So. But I was disappointed because right. David Gemmell's got a big name, and I always thought I should read his stuff, and so I was disappointed because his reputation preceded him. Yeah, well, we actually talked about why he's so popular, even though his writing is not that good. Yeah, so, and on, why don't you put your lower third in? Uh, because it says, it tells me I need to go into the Hangout toolbox. That's all right, go ahead. Oh, okay, I just didn't... Oh, now it's okay. opening a whole new thing. Yeah, it's all right, we can still see you. Okay. Well, you well, guys just keep talking. And so so here's the interesting, here's the, the interesting thing. Do you guys, Dion particularly, do you think that you were more disappointed because you knew of his reputation? Or do, yes. you, think, do you think if you hadn't ever heard that he had any reputation, do you think you would have enjoyed it more? Um, I actually still sort of enjoyed it, but the, the, I don't think I've ever read a book where the dialogue is that bad. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I enjoyed The Night Surface more than this. And, and no, ladies and gentlemen, we did not plan this. <laughs> None of us discussed what we thought of the dialogue until this moment, I promise. The dialogue was just, just... Uh, oh, there was talking heads in a couple of places as well, and I'm like, who's talking? I'm, I've lost track of who's talking. Yeah, there's just line after line after line of dialogue. They all sound the same. There's no dialogue tags. I'm like, I've forgotten who the conversation's even between. Yeah, I didn't find that problem, but yeah, you're right. That there was no distinction between characters. Um, it was just yeah, and they were all very. They always sounded like, you know, when people are in a hurry to get away from someone, you know, they mm. want the conversation to end, or they're cranky. It sounded like everyone was they're, always cranky, they all or they wanted cranky. to. Well, well, now wait a second. It, there's a war going on. Wouldn't you be just a tad <laughs> bit cranky? Come on now. People are dying everywhere. Well, Every man that point. we talked to had lost what children and wife he'd ever had, or never had one. You know, I, I'm sensing a lot of pent-up issues. <laughs> I suppose that's right, but still, they were, even in war, like, you have moments of happiness, um, and you don't, everyone was just... You have angry. to, or you, or you don't cope. Yeah, it was... Um, but even Sorry, when they were happy, war, it's an invasion. Even when they were happy, they didn't sound a little intense. Hmm. Well, you know, we've, we've got 40 minutes left, so we've got a lot of topics here. Let's move on a little bit more. Let's talk about um, 
Vanek's first wife and her speech that Tasia gave to Danielle about beauty and what men fall in love with. Whoa, we're missing somebody. Yeah, Kiara's just run Bobby away. Bobby Snatchers. Well, I you said to... beauty, and somebody went and snatched her because she's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> and a child bursting. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a shame that um, that sort of she just it was like she hates men, but maybe she doesn't. And you know what? A lot of men right, are like that. Wouldn't you hate men? Yeah, but a I lot mean, of women are like that too. Just let's just be honest. <clears throat> What? There's a lot of women that are like that too. I know a lot of women that are are very um, uh, particular in the way that their men look. Yeah, so, but I think it's different in the fact that a man can leave. Like you can you can be married for say, I don't know, thirty years. You can get to fifty, and your husband can go off and marry a thirty year old and have other kids. But as a fifty year old woman, you're not going to go and marry. A what's going on now? Sorry. <laughs> What was that? It's the hot thing to be an older woman and go find younger men now. So yeah. you know, but I, I, don't know, I don't know that anything that compares you to a predatory animal of the jungle but, hey, would, would, would make me feel like a hot there's, thing. There's TV shows about it now, so I mean, it's it's you know where people used to make fun of it ten years ago. Now it's kind of the in thing. And there isn't a whole lot of people. I mean, you can just look, you open up your Facebook page and see it. But that so, might be for rich Americans. I don't know that it happens a lot here. I don't think it happens here. It's here. not a big thing here, unless I'm moving in the wrong circles. <laughs> I, I know some older single women, and they're hooking up with older single men. <laughs> they're they're not know, dating it, young men. It all just it, it all just depends. I just don't think it's as much a shock now. Or, or as mm. lopsided as it was back when this was written. Mm. This is that's a generalization I'm about to make, but and it's not going to be true of everyone, obviously, because it is a generalization. But broadly speaking, I think it's probably true that physical appearance matters more to men than it does to women. Um, you mm. see, plenty mm. of, and my husband actually talks about this, so don't blame me if you don't like what I'm about to say. This comes from the men's mouth. He says you see a lot of Hot women hooking up with men who are kind of average. David says the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, average looking. That's right. And it's because for uh, women generally are looking for other things. It's not to say that appearance is, isn't on the list, but I think if you were to ask a man and a woman the ten <clears> most <throat> important things that they wanted in a partner, and you ask them to list them in order one to ten, I think physical appearance would appear higher on the list for a man than it would for a woman. Oh, I think you're right. But, I mean, it's you know, I'm just saying that there, I, I do know. I think we get broad painted. There's a lot of big stereotypes as far as that goes. Well, uh, there's a lot of big stereotypes in general. So yeah. So uh, you know, I, it's a little. It's not as lopsided as everybody makes it out to be. Well, and the other thing, in all fairness, um, they actually, and you know, I really wish I thought about looking up the study before, and so that I could put the link up there. But there was a study. And I don't even remember when it was, but I remember reading about it. That talks about men are uh, stimulated more visually, and so yeah. the visual yeah. is actually <laughs> it is actually it, it's actually coded in their genetics to be more important. Whereas women, um, they're more sensory, like overall. This makes sense. Men watch porn. Women read erotica. Now the, and that is. Now that, that's an interesting thought because porn on your TV is going to be something that comes into your eyes. Erotica, which we know you can look on Amazon to see how much women read erotica, okay? I mean, I know some erotica authors and they will tell you, you want to sell a book, write erotica. The better you write, the better your sales, but you will sell even as a bad writer if you're selling erotica. It's true. Yeah. But you know, in all fairness, for, does that mean that we're more? Does that does that does that mean that women are more mentally stimulated? Does that mean I think that? So. I think so. What do you think, um, David? I think the question for Dion and MJ as women. Oh, sorry, David. I can't ask you. Um, do Do you think there's any truth in the concept that if a woman falls in love with a man, that he is then attractive to her? No. Yes. Yeah, you can be it. You know what? You can, 
you what? can see someone. You can see someone and go, he's not that good looking. But then you start talking to him, and then you kind of get into him, and yeah. then you're like, oh, he is good looking. Yep. He becomes oh, more wow. good looking as you get to like him. Yep, I think that that, that for women, physical attraction increases based on how much she likes him as a person. Yeah, yes. but that, there's a million studies that say that. I mean, that's not new. new. Not that, but yeah. okay, so, <laughs> so here's a so here's a question. Then, if a woman starts liking the man, does the man become more attracted to the woman because she likes him? And is interested in him. Through, and well. him? Or does he become no. less attracted, or does it matter at all? I think it some minute it, it, it matters how quickly and how it's done. So for the woman that falls in love ten dates in and is all of a sudden ready to move in together and and have babies and you know, that's that's not making the guy more attracted to them. That was my husband. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, it, you know, if it's a comfortable situation, if the guy is sure that there's not going to be a bunch of vindictive uh, personality issues, things like that, then, yeah, that can happen. But women tend to be very catty. Yes, you can send that hate mail to me. Oh, <laughs> catty. Um, they can be We're very not smart. catty. We all, all three of us love each other. We have they, not a bad wow. one. You're, each not, other competing. Except you're not competing. You're not competing. Dion's always late. But I mean, and, you know, most of my women friends will say the same thing. They're very, very catty. It, there's a women lot of not catty. You know, they tear each other down all the time, and 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 if things don't go their way, a lot of times, first thing they do is they get on Facebook and post what a jerk that guy was, yeah. and blah 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 blah, and 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 you know, you can be as blunt and honest as you want to be with somebody. People always hear what they want to hear. They do. Well, That's very true. So even if I, you know, even if you say something like, "I am not looking for a relationship," that other person may not care that you're not looking for a relationship. And if they don't get what they want, then those qualities come out of them. So, no, I mean, there, I think for for men, in some instances, they want to spend more time making sure that that craziness isn't going to appear. So you don't, think there's, any, you don't think there's any craziness in men? Let, no. let, let's step back from well, looking for all, a long-term relationship. First of all, we don't have enough emotional energy to be that crazy. Um, oh, that is, no, that getting email goes stuff. to David. <laughs> <laughs> Can I change the question a little bit? Can I change the question a little bit? Sure. Yes, yes, let's, let's, let's bring it back to the book. Let, let, well, let, before we get there, let, let's, let's move away from the long-term relationship. There's the guy in a club. And all he's looking for tonight is casual sex. Right. There's two women. They're both attractive. One's, let's say she's super hot, and the other one's just hot. The super hot <laughs> one doesn't care about him, but the hot one likes him. Oh, he's Which going to he what's like? available. I, I'm going to tell you. I, 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 worked, I worked as a DJ for three years. I'm yeah. going to tell you. He's going for what's available, and it doesn't matter how many shots it takes to make her look super hot. <laughs> David. <laughs> I, I'm, I, David, back me up here. It, well, it's, it's simpler than that. He's not used to getting attention from anybody, so he's going to take what he can get. Um, yes, I think that if a woman's giving a man attention, that it, it might not be enough for a long-term relationship, but I think it does have some effect. It there does is, have some I mean, effect. There, you know, for the immediate gratification, uh, yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. But, I mean, for a guy that's done that for a while or been there for a while, um, who's been in that scene that's for a while, different. They don't, tend to go, they don't tend to go just for, you know, they, 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 you can kind of tell who you want to avoid pretty quickly. And you start looking for deeper yeah. stuff. Oh, okay. Absolutely great. So I'm no going to bring, bring this back to the book. Watch, back watch the book. this masterful segue. Okay, so the Waylander says he is not in love with Danielle. She confesses her love to him, and bam, they're in the sack. Hmm. Do That's because he had, no of he had nothing about? else to write about. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, that's the other thing I wanted to say. He was, that's just, things were just happening for the sake of them happening, yeah. just because it suited the plot. Like, he, both times he got saved. People did stuff that was totally out of character, and that just shitted me. I just thought, you're just trying to be convenient here. That yeah, really annoyed me. It, it, yeah. was, it was very badly written. Yeah, I don't think you can, I don't think you can really draw any real sexual content out of this book and try to compare it to real life. No. Uh, Dion, here's a question for you. We all talked about who we might get to 
to take an outline of this book and rewrite it and make it better. So I'd like to know if you were going to choose an author to rewrite this book and actually make it everything that it could possibly be, who would you choose? And, um, and you can't make... choose anybody here because we already right, did if... that. Yeah, but if someone can they be dead? Yes. 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 He'd still be better. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I think. Um, oh well, just the authors that I like. I, you know, Robert Jordan would have done a much better job, or David Eddings. Any of them, really? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Have Dion, it down the road. Dion, no. <laughs> honey, if you get Robert Jordan to rewrite this book, I'm gonna <laughs> bow down and worship you. <laughs> what she needs is a medium. But That's true. You know they're dead. I asked you if they could be dead, and you said yes. You could add. Oh, okay. I missed that. I'm sorry. Add, I missed that add, part. You could add just 300 words to this book, and it would be immensely better. Yeah, we could collaborate just, and do a rewrite. Yeah, f fan fiction, but it's because we don't actually like it in the first place. Well, no, no we discussed that. It's not that we don't like it. It's just so thin that there isn't enough there to really yeah. dig into. Okay, yeah. so. It wasn't that we didn't like it. It's that it yeah, could yeah. have been so much. We all agree yeah, that that, there's a story there. There's a, not, there's a yeah. really good concept. And look, it's a, it's a fast-moving plot, which a lot of people like. I was reading the five-star reviews, and, yeah, I shouldn't have said we didn't like it because I actually I wanted to read it till the end. There was enough in it that I, I wanted to see Waylander succeed. Yeah, I did. And, look, you know what? I actually liked the characters despite the shit dialogue and the convenient plot sort of things that he used. I, I quite like yes. the characters and I wanted to see them succeed and survive. Um, so, you know, if someone could have done a slightly better job writing, it would have been so much better. And the funny thing is I liked it despite how many problems it had. This and comes back to storytelling versus writing. Yeah. Yeah, so look, I've read a lot of the five-star reviews and I think a lot of the guys out there were just happy that they didn't have to think too much. It was a fast-moving plot. There was always something happening, just going from one thing to the next to the next because most of the five-star reviews were from men. Those were for so the guys that were reading, we, Those were for the guys that were recording the emotional audience. conversations with their wives. Did, did you just <laughs> do that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think maybe we just answered the target audience question. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, men. Men just like, they either like a lot of intrigue or they just want a fast-moving plot. That's something I, I although oh, having said that, a lot of guys like it. No, a lot of guys about stereotypes? Oh, uh, look, oh, a lot of guys oh. like Lord of the Rings and that's totally different. That's more, that's quite slow moving. There's a lot of information in that one. So that is different. But yeah, the people that seem to like it were the males. Lord of the Rings is an epic. This is not an epic. No, that's no, true. That's this, is more, this is more what they call heroic fantasy, which tends to shorter um, standalone books. It's, it's not an epic. Hmm. They could have wrote this in a short and it would have been much more successful. Actually, the other thing that I really didn't like was the ending was just like, bam. To me, it was more like a screenplay than a novel. You could turn it, it into was... a really good movie. So, yeah, yeah well, so there, there's, there's a question. If it was a movie... Yeah, they would, yeah, they could fix because then the actors could give their personality to the dialogue. You wouldn't be ready to get in your head as all yeah. stunted. Um, yeah. And and the way it ended was like a movie. It was a very quick ending. And in movies, you know, they have only four or six pages or something for the end, and that's it. So I to mean, me, it was more like a script. Th there was there was no description of surroundings hardly. There was you know nothing to set tone or feel of the of the moment. If you put atmosphere. it in. Yeah, if you put in a movie just by having a location, you're going to greatly increase any satisfaction you get out of it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was it was so completely weird to me to, to, to read a book that, and I felt like I have no idea where they are half the time or what, the, you know, trying to imagine the world that they live in. No, no clue about what the place they were standing looked like. You know, yeah, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't conceive of any mm. sort of appearance the setting. Right. I think they were just moving so quickly through the landscape. He just didn't waste any time on emotions, didn't waste any time on descriptions. It just was... So is bang, it possible bang, bang. that we're seeing that the, the writing style is very much kind of the same style as he was trying to get, or like the personality of the whale or was like, you know... I don't care about this, I don't care about this, I care about this. And that was kind of that how the was written, was I don't care about this, I care about this. 
That would make more sense if this had been written in first person point of view. Right. Yeah. Which it's, it's omniscient, so you'd expect more from an, an omniscient point of view. If they'd written it like that, it probably w would have been a little better, but they didn't write it like that. They, I don't think David Gemmell could have done it. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, even third person limited would have been, you'd still have the external narrator, but you would just be seeing things through his eyes, which might have, I've noticed, Kiara, that you've made comments previously and then for this book that third person omniscient is not the point of view that you particularly like. But I think no. you prefer third person limited. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and I, when I first started reading this, I, th I thought it was meant to be third person limited, but I changed my mind. There's just a, I think it is third person omniscient, but there's the yeah, occasional definitely. spot where it kind of blurs. You know, it's like it's like he, he kind of stepped out of omniscient towards third limited. There's only the odd spot, and it, it feels really weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, if if you were trying to give this book the feel of Waylander that he has of not caring about what's happening and looking past things, that would have been much more effective and made more, you know, first person um, perspective. Mm. But, I mean, and some of the problems with this, the lack of mood and tension, are because it's in this, I think. Um, so even just changing the third limited could have improved it. Mm. Well, let's move on to the the next point. Uh, Dardalian's exposition on uh, balance. Whose dog is that? Figures. It's the new girls. Well, you know, here's the thing. The guys went to a movie and they were convinced that was not going to be a problem leaving the dogs in the other room with no one there. These are the dogs. That worked. These are the dogs that think they own the planet. We live in a neighborhood where everybody walks in the evening, and you guys pick the hour that everybody's walking past my house. Oh, no. We didn't pick the hour. It's always set at this hour. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and if it was at 1030, they'd be barking at the sprinklers, because at 1030, the sprinklers <laughs> go off. And they bark at the sprinklers and then expect a treat, because they, they, they scared off those dangerous sprinklers. Yeah. Oh. Well, anyway, so let's get back to uh, Dardalian's. Uh, I will. I will. I will. Um. I will have a talk with him later. Yeah, I bet you will. Let's uh later. talk about the balance. And Dardalian's position on that. What, what do you guys think? Well, it was his like his discussion about the when dis when when Dardalian was discussing how, and I I use the term balance, but I only use the term balance because he is discussing how. If they remain priests of the source as he has always known it, they may remain pacifists to the point that they allow innocent people to just die in front of them, that they allow children to be slaughtered, that they allow just whatever to happen, and they never lift a hand. And this is very, this is something he just, he sees as a real problem. And so then he, he when he's talking to the abbot, he starts talking about how, if he's really going to be judged by the source for his action, he feels like he would also be judged for his inaction, so he would rather be judged for doing what he really truly feels actually saves, actually protects, and it, it, versus, and the abbot is like, the abbot is completely like, but then you're just, you're just, you're just making more war. And so um, I was kind of, I was intrigued by that. This didn't come from personal revelation, though. This come from mixing Waylander's blood with 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 him. And so, mm. it, it, the way they explained it, it was like a joining of the two. They were connected. It wasn't a personal revelation where, after traveling with Waylander, he started to realize that you couldn't just sit there and do nothing. So, you know, there's a little bit of a twist on that. Well, and and that's my question: is do you think that's viable? I mean, really. Uh, somebody's blood dripped in your mouth, and now your whole it's perspective vanity. in life is... Yeah, in, in, in this world, it is, yeah. Because it's a world where people talk funny. <laughs> you no, know, it's a world where people talk the same. What are you talking about? They talk the same and very little. Yes. <laughs> but that's okay. They do plenty of other things. <laughs> as far as that alien but not in speech, detail. Yeah, it goes. Um, I, mean, I think there's a fair amount of truth 
in, in what Dardalian saying, even though it didn't come to him as a revelation through his travels, it was just the, the catalyst of the change that Wayland just wrought on him. If, if you take the point of view that you do nothing, what happens? All that happens is that the bad guys win and they kill yeah, exactly. all the innocent and right. they end up in control of everything. They're not going to stop because they go, oh my god, you're all not resisting us and we're such terrible people, we shouldn't be doing this. That's not going to happen. They're just going to take over and rule. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't believe in that as, as, a, as a philosopher. I don't think it works. Um, if you go back to Dad Alien's discussion about self-sacrifice, and he's saying that it's not a sacrifice to do something you want to do, which there, there's a amount of truth in that. I mean, it's only a sacrifice if you don't want to do it, isn't it? Or, or if it's mm. something that you're doing for somebody else, you know, that you wouldn't otherwise have done. I mean, if the source priests want to be pacifists and they want to not resist, and so they do that and they die, where's the sacrifice in that? They haven't given anything to anybody else. They've just done what it they wanted to do. Exactly. Um, but if you say, well, I would rather not commit violence, <laughs> but I believe that to save lives, that is the sacrifice that I should make, that's a sacrifice. You, you are doing something that you'd rather not have to do in the defense of innocent lives. So I, I think that there's some, mm. there's some validity to Dudalian's arguments. I do, and um, I was curious. There's a lot of there's a lot of, especially in the world today, a lot of back and forth over that about how do you how do you deal with an enemy? Um, let's bring this to current. I'll bring this to current discussion uh, globally just regarding terrorism. Do you fight terrorism? How do you fight terrorism? Uh, terrorism is bad. The bad guys hurting innocent people. Oh, can we not talk Why about terrorism? Them? I, don't, I don't want to talk about terrorism because that's a massively detailed subject. That it is, it is. but, but the, the reality is, is you cannot play that game on the taking the high road feel and expecting to come out on top. No, you can't exactly. So for those people who think that oh, you can't torture, you can't do this. You have no clue what it's like to be in that world, and if you That's think right. that treating everybody fair and, e and evenly is going to is going to win the war, you're, you're completely deluding yourself. But that, now, can, go ahead. I was just going to say that. Being said, um, that's not every war either. So you, you just have to, you know you have to equate it to if you want to win, you have to be willing to do what the other person is willing to do. Well, and we're also talking about a very different type of enemy here. I mean, if you remember. Uh, Cram, Cam, whatever his name is, K E A M, K A M, came. Um, he came anyway. Uh, <laughs> came. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I just couldn't leave it be. I apologize. We are now on Tweet Nation. Please, yes. thank you for joining us. Welcome to Tweet Nation. This is Dion's show. No. Um, now, on a serious note. He he sits there and he talks to the Gan and he's like, okay, the what are your terms of surrender? And immediately after agreeing to these terms of surrender, he plots to just slaughter the people that he would Everyone. just promise he would release. So yeah. I think we're dealing with a, a different kind of an enemy. But what I was going to say when David was talking was, conversely wise, you can't, although you can't approach it like the priest of the, priest of the source, what about how Waylander approached it? I'll just kill whoever as long as it benefits me. That's not any better. It's not, but it's doing less damage. So, uh, so my question is, by joining their souls, did we get a balanced person? Wayland, I think, person for the situation. Of, yeah. Yeah, uh, Wayland was a product of a personal situation. He, he, who he was, and and how he reacted wasn't any attempt to win a war or fight a battle. That was, I think, that was just trying to stop how much he was in pain. You know. Um, I'm in pain, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do whatever I have to do to make the pain stop. And then he kind of woke up one day, which we can, we can call the waking up day, the day that Nardalian touched his soul and went, my God, look at everything I did to make the pain go away. Um, and he you know, so I, 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 yeah, he, I think he was just trying to bury himself. He, he, did, he just he wanted to stop thinking and feeling all the things that he was thinking and feeling. And he just went and did whatever he could do. Uh, to do what he was doing or to lose your wife and your child 
like that, you shut off every emotion that you have. You can no longer have a sense of morality and and uh, do what he was doing uh, while trying to, to, to deal with that, that, that history, that pain. So from that standpoint, it's completely understandable that he was so tunnel visioned in the way that he thought and felt. Mm. However, once he got touched, now you put in a whole that that was that would be where the intrigue really starts for the story of the book that still was not touched upon enough. Um, and you know his 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 journey was completely one person. It it, it so completely mm. different from what everybody else was doing and the balance of a yeah. war versus the balance of a person that you can't really compare the two. Yeah. I think too when you're talking about balance it they weren't necessarily balanced as an entity, they were just the balancing force against the other force. That's all it was. Against the brotherhood? Yeah. yeah. So they're yeah. just the they're just the if you look at the bigger picture, that's where the balance comes in, not in the actual melding of the characters. It's more a balance against the opposition. So yeah, two so different two opposing right. forces. Yeah. All right. Anyway. What's next, David? So I was just checking to see if we had any comments. Um, Thirty priests versus the, the uh, three hundred uh, combatants of Spara and the. So oh oh. <laughs> now I have to admit I I didn't pull this out of there at all so I didn't. Okay, see. no, that was actually written when I was okay. So I'm seeing the part where he's dreaming of the number thirty and he's like the number thirty. And then I get to the part where the priests say when he says how many are you and the, then as. Delia, yeah. 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 Um, he says 30 including you and he's like 30 is a good number and so immediately in my head I was like oh great so we've got the 30 that are going to save everybody which I think if you get later in the book that's kind of because the catalyst here it, it, Waylander is kind of the catalyst for eventually the temple of the 30 being built which I think goes into the series more it, it does. The Temple of the Forty, I think, is in just about every no, genre novel. Or no, all no. Of them. But it just, it, it just, it felt like right at that moment, like he was trying to do a, these 30 people are going to save everything. And I was like, really? So instead of 30, we have, so instead of 300, it's 30 now. Which, oh, I mean. I didn't get that. I didn't get that at all. No, it was just, it was a random thought. And then I got further in the book and I was like, wow, that was kind of stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so you have all been now exposed to my random thought stupidity that happens. No, it's not stupidity. That's your opinion, and it, it could be totally what he was thinking. But oh, oh no, I was on that. this end of it. Really, it was stupid. I think she was looking deeper than it really was because this book did not offer that much depth. I was, no. yeah, I was, I was really reaching because at that point I still was thinking this book was going to really get there. I was mm -hmm. like. I was like, okay, this is all foreplay. This is going to get really good, right? Mm, no. No. So, right. since we know that that's a bunch of crap. Um, just... And the other thing, too, when she, when that lady left her kids and just kept going. Who they weren't does her that? They weren't her kids. Leaving... Whose kids are they? Kids. They weren't her children. Oh, see, I didn't even get that. Yeah, Whose children her. were they? Who the hell's children were they? I mean, and, and then again, I mean, you, you take this, uh, there's no emotional center of anything. So even okay. in, a, in America people, today, be be because, of, because of bad press for Catholics, nobody's going to just leave children with priests. But that's besides the point. Yes, you can send the hate mail to me. I was, but I was raised Catholic, so I can kind of go there. But anyway. All no. the Catholic people at Sapphire Blood. Yeah, sorry. Okay, <laughs> on a serious note. And that was that was a mean that was a mean joke, and I am a mean person, and I apologize. But it's not a mean sure. joke; it's a legitimate you know, joke. But, but, no, but, I, but I but I do I do think I do think Dion's right. I mean, who you you're caring for these children? You were pissed no, off no, 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 that no, he killed no, the boy. No, why would that point in the book be any more pointed out than any emotion, other emotional point in the book? Yeah, yeah. But can I ask a question? Whose whose kids are they? Do we even know? They're just Orphans. refugees from the town. Oh, because because remember the whole wagon was slaughtered, and she had yeah. yeah. The, the, like the whole can caravan was slaughtered, and it was her and the three kids, and then Waylander oh, killed the boy. Right. Well, well, I don't remember that being. 
he he yeah. he helped the boy in a very uh, terminal way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's talk about that. How how I know it was really hard to care about the characters, but how did anybody how did how did you all feel about that? I think again, that's another typical plot point in a book. There's yeah. Lots Why would you think it needed to be done? Yeah. You know, there are a lot of books that avoid that specifically avoid children dying, especially at the hands of the supposed to be hero. But don't speak cool. bad of he, Yeah, he, he's number one. He's not supposed to be the hero, and number two, it, it, that's a very critical point, and and putting you in his position about how easily he's able to do things that most people could not do, because he's completely closed himself off. Yeah, I think that adds to the character. I mean, and I. As much as I have young boys, and it was that was probably the saddest moment in the book, actually, um, just because he was a boy. But I think, I think it ha it it strengthened the outline of um, Waylander's character. Uh, okay. Did what needed to be done. Sorry, guys, I need to go for a second. Keep talking. Hi, <laughs> boys. Hi, boys. He couldn't be saved. Um, there was nothing that they could do for him except watch him die in extreme agony. And why don't they really do it about? Yeah, and, and where he was, it w he would also probably have gotten infected and everything else. That was Absolutely. Really so it's it's a mercy uh, it killing. Mercy. Yeah, to begin with, and so you can't really look at it like. Did you huh? did you catch that he found a spot the boy wouldn't feel it first? Yeah, but that's I mean that was his job. He's an assassin. But, I mean, he actually looked to make significant. sure the boy wouldn't actually feel. Yes, I think that's significant. Waylander, as an assassin who doesn't care about other people, actually not only, I mean, he can kill people, we know he can kill people, but he did a mercy killing. You know, he didn't need to do that. He didn't have to do that. Right. Not only did he give a mercy killing to save somebody from suffering, but he did it in a way that was as painless but as possible. The boy reminded him of his son, and that's what he was re remembering at that yes. moment when all that was going on. Right. This, this is a point where the author has actually managed to communicate to us something that we need to know about the character right. and, and done it in, in a way that you know, perhaps wasn't as polished as it could have been, but it was effective enough. We got the message, you know. That he's, was... he's not... Well, that that he's... was probably my favorite scene. I hate That, that sounds really, really horrible because I have boys. That was actually probably my favorite scene because he took the time to show us that... He, he took the knife point to find where the boy wouldn't feel it, so he would just basically go to sleep. I wouldn't say he took the time. He did it in one paragraph. However, it's one of the very few times anything is actually set up so that you understand why. Yeah. I meant the Waylander took the time to, to poke uh, around. And yeah. The author certainly didn't take the time. <laughs> no. <laughs> So, all right, let's David loved here. this book. Can you all tell? <laughs> David Lutt wants to read every book by this author. Yeah, right. Ever. Let's um, let's talk about the last point so we don't run too much over. But um, Sorry. Let's talk about the contrast of th this author's writing style versus the fact that there is a major literary award out there for this guy in the UK, and that somehow, some way, now I don't. How did that happen? I, who knows? Maybe the rest of his books are much, much better, and this is the only toilet book that that came out in the series. I don't know, but it is there, and he, you know, obviously from your guys' research, he has a a ton of admirers. So how is it possible that you can put out a book that is as thin as this, and then have some kind of major UK literary award named after you? Unless he was just insanely rich and gave a lot of money to somebody. Well, that's possible. I don't know. <laughs> Um, although the, the award was named after him after he died, so I don't think he was paying anyone off for it. No, but I mean, um, he been a philanthropist. You know, <coughs> a philanthropist, and if, if his books were decent and they sold well, he could have given everything he had to a certain thing, and they, because of his charitable... Well, that's possible. Yeah. That's possible, I don't know. If, if that's not the case, I mean, the only thing I can think of is that he got the nod because um, he... He was popular and he did make a lot of sales and there is something to his stories even though perhaps the writing isn't top notch. Is it? Um, so uh, I, I guess in that sense he did still make some sort of contribution to um, the writing community. It, it, Can I ask, have you guys read any of his other books? I have, I've read them all. 
And what did you think? Because I saw reviews that said the first two were okay and then this one was a disappointment. So did you find that the others were better? I read them a long time ago and this was actually one of my favourites at the time that I read it. Um, oh, so I'm not convinced. Uh, I would have been in high school. So about five years ago. <laughs> Fifteen no, years no, ago. She looks that young. Ago. She's really not. She just looks that good. Um, For youth and beauty so, secrets, that is, uh, give, give, give her Twitter address. I can't read it. My contacts it's are It's koala poo. We rub koala poo on our faces now. Is it really? <laughs> wow. You know, I'm totally, I'm totally going to, I'm totally going to ask you to bring koala poo in October. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> um, I, so I, I don't think that most of his books are noticeably better than this one. So maybe some of the later ones, um, that there was a series of four books, the Reganti series, I'm thinking maybe it might have been better written, uh, but all the stuff you know from the 80s, I'm sure it's much the same quality as this. Could it be possibly, because he is a, a, a British author, that maybe there was a drier sense of writing from that time, that era, from those types of authors, and maybe... We would well, maybe, but the the award wasn't created until two thousand and eleven. I have um, a. So it's a recent award, so it wasn't like they created the award in, in the eighty. I have a theory. What's the name of the award? What? What, what was the? I lost. Anyway, you. yeah. I, I, you, do I, you want the name of the award? I don't know. No, 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 no. I just think that um, you can name an award after someone that was popular. It doesn't mean they, they had to be any good, but he's popular and he's got a wide readership, so why well, not? I, mean, usually, I, have a, I have a theory. Do you guys want to hear it? No, well, yeah. hold on. Usually you don't get an award unless you've earned it for something or you've had some sort of excellence, unless your name is Obama and you got the Nobel Peace Prize for no reason. Oh! So, he wasn't given the award. It was named after no. him. The award yeah, is now yeah, given it was named after. I mean, but I'm still usually there's some there's some sets of excellence because you were so good at yeah. what you do, yeah. or you gave so much money. We're going to name this after you. That's well, that's, maybe he did. Maybe he did give money. Maybe, maybe his family up. gave money and they wanted to see his name there. Maybe. You don't know. Well, I'm not saying. I, that's what I brought up earlier. Is that there's a good reason that that could be a good reason why he does have a name or award named after. Him. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay, first of all, now that you've got us all on the FBI watch list, thank you. Um, <laughs> also, can say hi, we're FBI. All of our email right now, and our phones are being tapped while we speak. But my theory, I want to share my theory. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In America, Dragonlance and the Dragons of Pern were just, they were the. They were the beginning. They were the they were the things that 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 we. I mean, they were really Smooth really off. influential in the growth of the fantasy genre um, within American culture. Is it possible? Because I don't know anything about British culture, in spite of the fact that Kiara was convinced that I was British for some reason. So um, was I. I thought you were too. Why? Because I used actual English. You, you think no, it I just thought you were. Is that? And I imagine I think it that might you were a bit older too. I'm going to drink one night, one night when we do this, I'll drink a beer and you guys can see my real southern accent, which is scary. But, uh, <laughs> but is it possible that he was as influential as Tracy, Tracy Hickman and Margaret Weiss um, and McCafferty? These people were like very influential in like no. the beginnings. Is it possible that he was in the UK? That, no. that important, that influential. No. no, I don't think so. I don't think he was. No, uh, I, it appears he. I don't know. I'm on I didn't up there for the award. I'm on the website for the award, and it says that um, the the award aims to raise public awareness of the fantasy genre, celebrate the history and cultural importance of fantasy literature, appreciate and reward excellence in the field, and commemorate the legacy of David Andrew Gemmell and his contribution to the fantasy genre. So they obviously think he contributed something. Right, you know, and maybe because he was able to sell a certain amount of books, but all of us, I think, here, I, I, I'm not sure how old uh, Melody is, but... Um, how old do I look? Go ahead. 53. Oh, don't put that on you. 
<laughs> oh, did he really say 53? Do I really look 53? No. 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 You're going to vote on me. You're not going to get an answer you like. Well, I just, you know, I actually, I was wondering, if I do look 53, then, you know, I probably oh, should lay off this wine. I said 34 or 35. Really? Yeah. I would have said you're about my age only because I think everyone, no, everyone's not my age, but, you know. Yeah, but you only look 28, so most of, us, most of us back then were reading enough books. I mean, and back then I read voraciously. I read all the time. So, oh, I get yelled at for reading too often. You well, know, I, I don't know that, you know, that uh, back then he was all, maybe his popularity came a little bit, came a little bit after um, no, but it, you know something. If it was he ever marketed as a young adult writer, or a, a, no, or they didn't not? have that back then. The genre didn't exist back then. Yeah, that that only came about because they had to have a Twilight. way to separate. No, actually, I think it was. I think young adult existed before Twilight. I think that the that came about because they needed a category of wow. higher level reading that didn't include sex or sexual situations. What are, you, what, are you, what, are you, what are you looking at there, Kira? David Gemmell produced 30 best-selling novels and is widely regarded as the UK's most accomplished author in the heroic fantasy genre. There you go. So in England, he sold really well. That so, in England, so, so I was right. In England, he was a big influence in yeah. fantasy. Like I just have to tell you all I'm having deja vu at the moment. Why is that? <laughs> Just when Kiara read that, I'm like, I've dreamed that before. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, ladies and gentlemen, our resident psychic is Dion. Feel free to contact her on Twitter. She'll be happy to tell your fortune. Uh, you know, We're only fifty bucks a fortune. Good lottery numbers yeah. and um, oh, oh, and buy Here's her book. Trivia. What? Here's some trivia. What? David Gemmell used his journalist colleagues as the cast for his third novel, Waylander, and lost his job over it. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> no. Okay, so that's, ladies and gentlemen, do not use your friends or your no, colleagues. No, you know, maybe that's what shot him off is because, like, people love the fact that you can throw your co-workers under the bus like that. That's awesome. <laughs> everybody died. Almost died. died. You killed everybody. That's awesome. And who was he sleeping That's why they all die. You know, that, that tells us what he thought of his coworkers, doesn't it, guys? That's, That's awesome. All right, so now we are at our 90-minute mark, and I know that Dion got here a little bit late, so we can go a little bit longer if you want, or we can we can cut it off here unless anybody's got some final points they want to make. I know we still have to talk about the next book, but as far as Waylander goes, is there any other comments or topics that anybody wants to broach? No, I'm good. No, so let's rate it. Everybody give everybody give their their five star rating. Kiara. Two and a half. Dion. I was thinking two and a half, but then I thought, you know what? I did want to finish it, and I did like the characters despite all the problems. So it gets a three. <laughs> Melody Ann. Oh, you didn't do I that. Did. <laughs> <laughs> You do it with a southern accent, you'll sound like my mama. Okay, um, probably I would probably go with a three because the story, the story, the story, the story, the story, uh, the 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 outline, the possibilities, the potential. Uh, really, he didn't deliver, but yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm somewhere between like three, two and a half, three. I'd go with three because um, I'm gonna assume. That because of the period of time he wrote in, writing was a little more immature back then. I mean, wow, that didn't come out right. Um, that was it a was a style, but not fantasy, like fantasy, fantasy as a fantasy as a writing style was a little. The style was different back then. But it yeah, wasn't it's like true that. The style like, the time. I mean, but have you? Yeah, Edgar, have you read Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe could anything? never have get could never have gotten published today. But he's considered. I, I will disagree with that point of view. But I, too. I get it. Yeah. I'm going to give it two and a half stars. I was going to give it three until I remembered that I did like the Night Circus a little bit more than this, only because in that one you at least had a sense of your surroundings and the imagery was so good, even though there was no characterization. And this the writing one, writing was better. Yeah, the yeah. this one I've got really no characters to speak of, and I've got no sense of any surroundings or imagery going on. So I'm going to give it two and a half. I wonder if I got all the imagery and the characters because of just got. 
my imagination was just working over time and I was filling in the gaps. That could be. I mean, it's not like you didn't have something, but it's just there was it, it was there was no help to it. You you no. basically had to come up with it all on your own in this book. So yeah. that was a little bit of a disappointment to me. Um, mm. I do think that there is a ton of potential for a great story. Mm. I'm not going to say that there isn't. I mean, I, I do think that the guy had a lot of great ideas in there um, and a great concept. I just didn't really, well, just a, it did not drive me to want to read the book. It was a very stripped narration. That's how I would describe it. Very much so. All right, so there's our thing. So for those of you watching, uh, we will be posting some reviews over the next few days. I won't put them all at once. I'll stagger them out. So that's, oh, mine's ready. I'll good. You mine. We'll do yours first. Um, so make sure that you guys check those out on our website, clubfantasy.wordpress.com, and make sure you join us on Goodreads to discuss our thoughts and send all hate mail to Sapphire Blade again on, on Twitter. <laughs> so, how do I get the hate mail? Because you, you, you made the most comments that would warrant that. I only made one. So what? Send me all the love mail. Send me all the good stuff. <laughs> Sorry, send Dion all the love mail. She needs all your love right now. Yeah. Um, we love Dion. Anyway, our next book for the next month is Full Moon by Jim oh. Booker. So what kind of a book is it? Is it paranormal? Is it What is it? This is urban fantasy. It's our first urban fantasy book. And it's the, the Dresden Files, which is a very popular book series out there right now. We and need to read those. This is the second the book second. in the series. I was going to yeah. do the first book, but I already wrote the, the book review on it and posted it the other day, so I didn't think that was fair, and I was cheating a little bit. Um, this one has a little bit more to it as far as length as well, too. So um, we might have a little bit Do we bit need more. to have read the first book, though, to no, get the second you don't. one? No, you do you do not have to have read the first book, and that's so it, so it comes. So it is a standalone. If you wish stand to stand alone, or you can go stand. back. Yeah. And, okay. And you know, the, the, this series has had a TV series named after it. It's had a, a, a game series named after it. There's a graphic novel for a comic book series. It's it's got a wide, wide fan base. And when I posted the review the other day, I got a ton of feedback on it from Google Plus and other places that I put it. There's a huge fan base for this stuff, and Jim and his characters reply on Twitter. He's got a character account for everybody in the book, and they all they all do their own personalities on Twitter. Oh, that's cool. Oh, you, I am going to have so much. I'm going to get in so much trouble with that. So, that's cool. Oh, I'm going to start you know, an for my dragon. Jim himself is, is, is very forward-thinking. Now, there's other people I know that have character accounts on Twitter. But this is the first one I've come across where the characters actually come through on Twitter, and it's not just a fake account tweeting spam. There is That's actually cool. there is actually a web comic I love, 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 called Questionable Content, and all of the characters, or most of them, have their own Twitter accounts, and they do stay in character, and they actually tweet to each other. Um, and it's really rather it's really rather amusing. But I'm going to start my own now. I'm going to call it Zim the Dragon. Um, and you should. Right. But that's, I've never heard of a novel doing it. <laughs> let, let, now, let me give you a little bit of a reason why I started reading this. Now, uh, th two of us in this group write for Geek Eccentric. And, um, and one of the companies that puts out the RPG game for this series contacted me and asked me if I would review the game series. And I said, sure, I've never done that game series. So they sent me the books. The manual and the, the core manuals were done in the same way as the books. The characters are in the manuals. There's little side notes. It's quippy. It's funny, and it actually the manuals themselves actually put me into the world and made me want to read the manuals, which most manuals bore you to death. So oh, we we need to have a we need to have an online game of that. That's yes, fun. Yes, we will. We will because I have to review the series. Anyway. Um, so then I went ahead, and I had already actually bought the first two books. I just had never gotten around to reading them. So I immediately started reading them, and uh, it's um, it's just a, an amazing series so far. So Full Moon by Jim Butcher, The Dresden Files. Go find it, and this will be our book of the month for the month of June. And um, at Fool, as in F-O-O-L, not Full Moon, Fool Moon. And um, we'll do that next. So it should be pretty exciting. Um, I, I can am, tell you I am definitely looking forward to it. 
So um, that'll be our next book of the month. Don't forget. Let me go back to my little page here so I can see what we what we have to announce. Um, uh, for all of you that do follow Club Fantasy, please make sure you follow us individually on our Twitter accounts. You can see them all at the bottom of our screen, and I'll have everybody announce them again at the minute at the end of the show. Uh, make sure you you follow us on Facebook, Club Fantasy. Uh, make sure you join us on Goodreads and actually get involved in the discussion because from the moment we start reading the book, we start posting discussion points on Goodreads or we'll ask questions on Twitter or on Facebook. So and get involved with us. Huh? Go ahead. I was just going to add something. I was going to say, just, so get involved with us. And, and for those of you who have read these series before, start, start, start the topics off and start telling us what you think right away and uh, make sure that you kind of help us out and retweet and like and all the things that we need to do on social media to make those kinds of things happen. What were you going to say? And, and realistically, if you get involved in the Goodreads discussion, you're probably going to hear some of your points brought up here. So make sure you get, you make sure that you leave your name. It's not an anon anonymous comment unless you're, you know, hiding from the FBI. But because we want it, we want to know what you think. We do, and and it's correct us if we're wrong and encourage us. But um, on serious. I'm, those of you that are David Gimmel fans, I would love to hear your uh, your feedback. And and for those of you, and I haven't confirmed this yet, but I am working on it. For those of you that do join us for this book of the month, I am working to get a copy of those RPG manuals, at least the PDF copies, to give out as a as a prize in a contest that we'll hold. But you have to contribute on the Goodreads accounts to make that happen. Wait, wait, I I can't. I don't qualify now. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you don't. So if you want to get a copy of those manuals, if you're into role-playing games, I'm going to try to work that out. I can't promise anything. But, uh, you know, join us on Goodreads, and we'll try to make that happen. Um, and then we will do a, a random drawing to make sure that you get somebody wins that prize. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, I, I want to thank everybody that tuned in tonight for sure. So thank you for joining us if you've never joined us before especially. Um, everybody go ahead and, and roll call your your social media accounts, and we'll start with Kiara. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Kiara Ballantyne, uh, also facebook.com slash Kiara Ballantyne, and my website is kiaraballantyne.com. Dion. I'm at Dion Lister on Twitter. I'm, I have an author page, Dion Lister, Lister, on Facebook, and my website is dionlisterwriter. No, yeah, yes. dot wordpress dot com. <laughs> I made it in front of me. I'm hopeless. MJ. Actually, you know, I don't have all my stuff in front of me. Sapphire Blade at, on Twitter, and you will find me under writing under magic on Geek Eccentric, which is geekeccentric.com. I do anime, and I do random other stuff, but um. You can find my website at sapphireblade.com. A little neglected right now, but um, if you if you come and say hi, I will definitely say hi back. All right, I'm David Lowry. You can find me at so many places, whether it be at Club Fantasy, at Lowry Agency, at David Lowry, at Lowry Agency Bo, uh, at LFMC Radio. There's a ton of them, so just find me and and you Facebook. Can... Find him on Facebook. Facebook. He is hysterical. On Facebook. Um, at the, the Lowry Agency, Facebook, the Lowry Agency, Facebook, Club Fantasy, uh, and I also have a, a fan page there as well, just David Lowry, or you can just find me at thelowryagency.com. So, that being said, uh, thank you to everybody who is participating. Thank you for the comments on Twitter. Uh, welcome to MJ, Peter Parker's girlfriend, for thank being you. here. Yes. I thank wish. You. He's hot lately. What's up with that? She's hot lately. Well, always. Um, I wish it looked like that. So, uh, anyway, welcome. Thank you for, for making all stuff happen that you've had done just in the last four weeks alone. And we Thank look you. forward to seeing everybody the last Friday of June, 7.30 p.m. CST, right here at clubfantasy.wordpress.com. And we will be discussing Full Moon by Jim Butcher. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.